Let's talk a little balayage, a little French balayage. So, um, Candy, uh, again, your family has been in the balayage business for long time. Long for, time, um, right? Probably about 18 years. So you've been in style forever, even though balayage, you're like, well, balayage has been around forever. But I, I know you've shared some amazing stories, right, Kristen? And, and we've, we've talked a lot about it, that balayage really changed your life when you learned it. But even more than that, 99% of your color business is balayage. That's unbelievable. Yeah. 99%. So share what that has meant not only to you, but also to your clients. Well, I'd like to speak about my backstory of balayage. I spent a lot of time uh, studying in Europe. And when I came back, I was very nervous about becoming a painter. You know, I thought, what? I don't know. Everybody else is putting foils in the hair. But nonetheless, uh, in my journey, uh, someone in my salon sort of took it on really before I did. And you know how it feels as a hairdresser when you're looking over your shoulder and what do you see in someone else's chair? Your client. Then you sort of get a little nervous and you say, wait a minute, maybe I do need to think about this. So um, I jumped on board and it has tripled um, my business at the salon. But I think the greatest part about it is the freedom of efficiency. Uh, being able to double the dollar that you're putting uh, out every day and... Um, when I teach, I always ask the students, who in the room wants to make more money? And I never see a show of hands of anybody that says no. Everybody says yes. And no one ever wants to work more. They want to work less. And so to me, being able to approach hair differently by painting it or putting energy in it, as I call it. You, you have your words. I have mine. But, but it's the same. It's all in the same. It's about taste level. And um, for me, uh, being able to paint hair and give clients what they want very quick and very efficiently. I loved what Kim, Kim did. I mean, the fact that he just went in and said, look, you know, make the face. Uh, you know, it was really interesting because it's true. At the end of the day, you're not building a monument. Uh, you're just trying to get people out and get people looking beautiful. And uh, nobody ever comes in and says, make me look ugly. So uh, I, I chose a long time ago to sort of be in the beauty business. And the beauty business was, I think, really where it's at. And I always try to say, you know, my ego's in the bank, not necessarily uh, in uh, something crazy, wacky, or wild. Because at the, at the end of the day, balayage has just really enlightened my life. Uh, it puts celebrity uh, feelings into people's emotion. And to your point, Ian, when you talk about the emotion of a woman, uh, ombre is an emotion, so is balayage. To feel having that done to you is, uh, is a very invigorating technique. You know, to have the freedom to paint and to be an artist and to really express yourself. And they can't get that down the street. You know, they can't get that out of a box, and they can't uh, uh, replicate that at home, to your point this morning. Uh, and so for me, it gives me a freedom to put my mark on my work. And what it's done for my salon is it's trained people faster to become better. And, and you know, as salon owners, we try so hard to get young people there quicker. And because you can't uh, waste any more time. I mean, these, these you know, two-year programs, I mean, people lose interest. You know, you've got to get somebody soup to nuts and 12 months on the floor producing. And so Balayage has really done that for me, and it's been an a, a amazing resource for us. And we're down south, so we're a little closer to the equator, so women love the blonde hair down there. Well, and I think... Um the, the one thing that I've heard from so many of the balayagers as well is when somebody's doing foils in the salon and somebody else is doing balayage, everybody's going, well, I want what she has, you know, as a client. They want to know what's going on. And so I think that that has been something that I've heard as well that's really changed. And you guys, do you do balayage as well? Yeah. Um, in our salon, we, we have a full spectrum across the way. I mean, we have full age group as well that we work with. So um, we kind of cover every base. But when it comes to doing either an ombre technique or um, with uh, balayage, you know, uh, using that, we, we spend just as long training our team on doing that as we do kind of going in and uh, doing a foil. And for the clients, it's interesting when you kind of start talking to a client and um, sometimes they don't really know exactly what it is that they're describing to you. You know, like you can say, is it visually like a group of little soldiers together, because that would probably be foil, 
you know? Or is it like looking at a child's hair and seeing how that fluidity from inside the hair coming out to a very light, kind of paler end, that would be more like us painting your hair. And I like to use the word painting as well, because I mean, I think it just gives that creativity. And because I've come from an art base uh, as a kid, painting to me comes more freely. So when I'm teaching a class or teaching the team at home, um, we kind of talk about it uh, as an art-based process. And um, a couple of things that we're starting to develop um, for the company that we work with, which is Weller, and ourselves, is actually working the whole process of hair color as a piece of art. So when the client sat there, they're feeling like they're being created, not just the finished look as a piece of art, but the process. So that's something that's kind of in development at the moment, and I think the way that the, the world is going, that clients deserve to actually feel special when they're in your seat, and not just special because they're leaving with a great looking hair, because as hairdressers and hair colorists, that's what we should be giving them anyway, is just great looking hair as they leave. But I think the aspect of when they first come to you and sit in the chair, we should be thinking more about how that experience is for them too. So to Candy's point, the feeling you get when you're having a more of a uh, balayage technique compared to a mechanical foil, it's like night and day. You know, one is like, am I going to pick up radio frequencies with all this tin foil on my head? And the other one is like, oh my God, I can't believe I've even got color on my hair because this feels so light. Well, so. it's a seduction. I mean, it really is. It seduces a woman. I mean, I'm, I, I, I say that with, you know, obviously a lot of respect, but when women sit down, they, they need a tender moment. You know, they want to feel beautiful, and this does allow us as artists to sort of approach their hair and their, their personality, their look, their, whatever it is that they're looking for at the end of the day, and we are able to nurture them and to really uh, give them that ability to see things that are unique and different. And um, for me, balayage, uh, it, it's never the same. And that's what I really love is that uh, when someone comes back, um, they maybe you paint more to the ends, less to the ends. Uh, maybe it's more to the scalp, less to the scalp. It's, it's really all about being an artist. Either.